Hey, what's up, guys? It has been a while since I uploaded a video, but I've decided to drop this short video based on some interview patterns and job description I have seen lately. Asking questions on RMF with consideration to system or software development life cycle. But before we start, as usual, if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Also, remember to smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. So RMF versus SDLC. Risk Management Framework or the RMF. It is the Unified Information Security Framework for the entire federal government that is based on the NIST Special Publication and the Federal Information Processing Standard. Whereas the System or Software Development Lifecycle, the SDLC, it is a structured process that enables the production of high quality, low cost system or software in the shortest possible time. The goal of the SDLC is to produce superior system or software that meets and exceeds all customer expectations and demands. Lots of RMF jobs out there lately are asking candidates how they can relate the SDLC or the software or the system development lifecycle to the risk management framework and why they think this is so important. They want you to understand why is it important to incorporate or to have security from the onset of the development process instead of applying security after the fact. So they, this is what they are trying to test. If you understand the principle of having security from the onset of the project to develop a system or your software instead of waiting till the completion of the project and then applying security. Why is that not so good of a strategy? Because number one, it's very expensive to apply security after the fact. And number two, you might end up with a software or a system that has a lot of security bugs. So mostly you see that during the interview, they ask, how do you relate the SD, SDLC with RMF? So you, you, you incorporate security from the feasibility studies to analysis and requirement gathering, and then see what security needs to be in place for the system development begins. Because organizations have different missions, business functions, and organizational structure, risk management activities begin early in the SDLC and continue throughout the life cycle. Many risk management roles defined in the Special Publication 837 have counterpart roles in the SDLC processes carried out by organizations. Many organizations align their risk management roles with similar or complementary roles defined for the system development lifecycle whenever possible. Ensuring that security and privacy requirements are integrated into the software development lifecycle helps facilitate the development and implementation of more resilient systems to reduce the security and privacy risk, including supply chain risk to organizational operations and assets, individual, other organizations, and the nation. This can be accomplished by using the concept of integrated project teams, enhance the advent of DevSecOps. So this is pretty much saying that or calling for that instead of having a security team as a standalone team, now most organizations are shifting into incorporating the security aspect of things with the develop, development or the developers as well as the operation team into a single unit which is called the DevSecOps. And this is what the future is looking for security teams. Mostly you'll be working alongside the developers and the operation teams in a team, in a single team or integrated team called the DevSecOps. Now let's look at how this diagram kind of depicts the two frameworks that we are talking about, the SDLC and the risk management framework or the RMF. So when you take a look at this diagram, you realize that the steps of the software development lifecycle or the SDLC, you have the initiation. This initiation step deals with feasibility studies and analysis, as well as gathering the requirements to develop a system or a software. 
In this step, you gather all the requirement, what needs to be understood before the system can be developed. Everything is being gathered here, the feasibility, how feasible is the system development? Can we develop the system? Can we develop the software? All of this initiation step here corresponds to the categorization step of what the risk management framework or the RMF. When you move down to the next level of the software development lifecycle, which is the design, the design phase corresponds with the security control selection in the risk management framework. So when you move down to the next step of the uh, SDLC or the software development lifecycle, this step actually consists of three layers. We have the development that directly corresponds to the implementation step of the RMF where the controls are being implemented. This corresponds to the development. And then when you go to the next step within the implement step of the SDLC, we have the testing phase. So this testing phase actually corresponds with the assessment phase of the risk management framework. And the last part of the implement, which is the deployment or how you deploy the system within the environment for operation, it corresponds with the authorization step of the RMF. And then when you move down to the ONM, which is the operations and maintenance, this corresponds to the monitor step of the risk management framework. And then we have the dispose or the end of life of the system. That is when the system or the software that was developed has no longer has any uh, usage within the production environment. This will be decommissioned or disposed of. This is the step of the SDLC and how they relate to the risk management framework as a whole. Now let's look at the Appendix H of the Special Publication 837 Revision 2 on page 181. Appendix H, System Life Cycle Consideration, Other Factors Affecting the Execution of the RMF. All systems, including operational systems, system under development, and systems that are undergoing modification or upgrade are in some phase of SDLC. Defining requirement is a critical part of an SDLC process and begins in the initiation phase, just as we saw in the diagram. The security and privacy requirement are incorporated into the SDLC simultaneously with the other requirements. Without the early integration of security and privacy requirement, significant expense may be incurred by the organization later in the life cycle to address security and privacy concerns that could have been included in the initial design. When security and privacy requirements are defined early in the SDLC and integrated with other system requirements, the resulting system has fewer deficiencies and therefore fewer privacy risks and security vulnerability that can be exploited in the future. Now moving on on this appendix, it further states that integrating security and privacy requirement into the SDLC is most effective, efficient and cost effective method to ensure that the organization's protection strategy is implemented. He went further by saying it also ensures that security and privacy processes are not isolated from the other processes used by the organization to develop, implement, operate, and maintain the system supporting ongoing missions and business function. Also, in addition to incorporating security and privacy requirements into the SDLC, the requirements are integrated into the organization's program, planning and budgeting activity to help ensure that resources are available when needed and program and project milestones are completed. This is how the risk management framework and the SDLC are you know, interrelated. So whenever you have um, an interview that is calling for um, you know, SDLC and the risk management framework, be sure to check out this page, uh, page 181, Appendix H, the system lifecycle consideration. You can read further and then you see more explanation as it relates to the RMF and the SDLC process. All right, that's it for this video. If you find this video useful, do like, share, and subscribe if you have not done that already. 
please do comment below and let me know your thought on the video and i'll see you in the next video